This talk is registered by Gabriel Panzo from Italy. But unfortunately, he cannot make it to come here. So under a very emergency situation, I take care of his talk. So I'm Franklin from Taiwan. So this talk is about writer and uh, will show some of its limits when it is handling a very complicated document. So actually this one is a share of an experience. And the background of that is that in Italy, several years ago, the Italian government started to migrate to open document format. And uh, uh, a couple of members helped the Italian government to migrate it. And this example is a very, very big, important organization in Italian government. So uh, the, the the document is very complicated. It, it is actually uh, seven or eight documents merged together. And uh, what I will demo here is totally anonymized. That means all the data is, is covered. Because if I show the data here, I will have to kill all of you, okay? Uh, and Gabi will have to key off you, okay. So uh, maybe some of you don't have much experience about writer, that's okay. If so, you can know that writer actually can handle very complicated document. But for those you have some experience about writer, you can see uh, some of its limits and how to avoid that problem. So I will show about maybe 10 or 12 examples about how to handle the document, complicated document. Okay, so the first example is about the call out. What is a call out? I can, they can, we can see the example. So you can see the, all the data is anonymized. And the, did, you, did you see this? This picture? Actually, there is something hidden behind this picture. When I try to make it send to back, you can see, did you see a lot of this? Even I try to make it to the back to make this call out. This is called the call out. To make this show and I try to save it. I saved it and I reopened it. You can see it's still hidden. Okay, this should be a bug in writer and it is already reported. It is already reported. So this is uh, you need to try to avoid that, and actually, when you export to PDF, it can be solved, but when you edit it, you need to know that there's something hidden behind the picture. That's one of the problems it has. The second, the second problem is kind of funny. We can see the, we can see the, uh, 
example. You can see all the documents is very complicated, so it always takes some time to load. Okay, we can see here, this is a picture and this is some call out, right? So if we click on the call out, you can see an anchor here. That means this call out is anchored by paragraph over here, and this one is anchored here, over here. There is some problem using this way because if I move this call out, up and down, you can see the anchor in the left move up and down, right? That means its anchor move this way. But if I put it here and I change the content, you will see this call out moving together like this. Did you see? Because it is anchored by the paragraph. So if I change the paragraph, it will move together. It cannot be stayed in the same position. So if you want to solve such problem, you need to anchor in the beginning, in the beginning, and change its position, offset the horizontal like this, and it will move down but it was still anchored here. Okay, so that's how, to, that's how to solve problem like this, because if you have some, some change of the content, you will make all the objects moving together. So you need to anchor it in the beginning and try to move its position. So that's the second problem we found. When you handle a document like this with text, with picture, and with a lot of little objects. Okay? And this one is about image anchoring. Here. Here, you can see this image with his caption. It moved out of the page, page period. Like this is the footer, and it is out of the printed printable range. And in this condition, you will find that it's a bit difficult to select the caption here. So the trick here is to select all you will need to select it, the picture first and then click the caption here. So you will... So you, will, you can do the select all and maybe... to cut it and paste somewhere else. Because if you paste it here, you will extend to the out of the page, page index. That is also reported as a bug, but haven't resolved yet. So that is something you need to avoid when you handle a very complicated document.
The next one is about the cross reference. I don't know if any of you handle cross reference like that. When you have many different documents and you want to merge it, you use a master document and merge all the documents together. You will, when you use the reference here, originally they will show error like this because the reference is in another document, not in this document. So he cannot find the reference. That's fine. That's fine. That's pretty normal. But before merging, before merging, you have no way to see if the reference is correct or not because it always shows error. You have to merge it all together and you need to check every reference you have to see if it is correct or not. Yeah, yeah, so that, so that is actually a limited when you, you handle, handle a very, very complicated, complicated, you have many, for example, uh, many, like, like this document, they have seven chapters, and each chapter has its own file. Each chapter has its own file. And uh, later, you use a master document, and later merge every, everything together. So before merge, the, the conference here, will always show like that. So you cannot make sure if it's correct or not. You cannot search the field or search its value. So that's also a limit it will have. Oh, this is also very fun. Sometimes you can see table like this. The border is gone. Usually, it will happen in if you have your table cell merge, and that cell cross a page. You will sometimes find that your border is gone. And I can show some example like this, but it will require a very old, very old version. Oh, yeah, yeah, over here. here. You can see the border is gone here. OK? okay. That sometimes, sometimes happens. Happen. Sometimes, sometimes it won't happen. happen. But, but another thing I can I show you that you can see this document, document. actually, most of it is pretty normal. And then do you know you what know version do I open this document? document? I'm actually, actually open it with LibreOffice 4.0. Photo is about maybe 2012, more than 10 years ago. So that's, that is one advantage of ODF, you know. Even this document is generated by new version, but still you use older version of software, you can still open it normally because the data is standard. But anyway, Sometimes the, sometimes the problem will happen, sometimes not. Like this. When, if you open it with newer version, it will not show like this. I'm using older version just, just to show you this problem. Okay, this is about, this one is about the table of content. That is something that, uh, because we have many documents to merge, right? So in the mesh document, in the mesh document, you will put a title, uh, 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 the cover, and the table of content, and the later all the document you want to merge. So when in the merge, the table of content maybe it is page one, it's just one page. 
But when more and more document inside the table of content will grow, will grow. When it grow over one page to two pages or three pages, the original page number of chapter one, chapter two will be wrong because it is growing. It is growing. So when you merge the first time, the table of content will be wrong. Because it is growing to more than one page, and so all the content will be pushed down. Originally, maybe the chapter is on page three, and the page two is table content. But when the table content is grow more than one page, the chapter one becomes in page four. But in in the table content, it still tell you the page three. So you have to update the table content again. To generate the correct table content, that is when you handle a very many document merge together, and you put the table content there. That's the problem you will face. So you have to update it again, and sometimes if you add more document in it, maybe you need to update it again and again to make it right. So I don't know if、uh, there's a way to fix this problem. Maybe if you have some interest in developing or debugging like this, you can try to solve this problem. Okay, this is about、uh, open and、uh, generating PDF. The time. The first. The first statistic, the first time, is on Gabriel's laptop. You can see that he opened. Oh, that that I will show you the ODM. He opened the ODM. It will take 48 seconds to open, but nearly two minutes, more than two minutes, to be used usable. And the most fun part is the PDF rendering. It will take him 13 minutes. 13 minutes to generate the PDF, the whole document, and that the most important is when you are exporting PDF, you cannot use anything, you cannot do anything. Just let it export the PDF. The total, the whole LibreOffice is not usable. Okay, on my desktop, this desktop, on my desktop. It is not that bad. I can open it now for you. This is the mass document, and we can see how long it will take. You have to wait. You can do nothing. Nothing you can do. <laughs> Just wait. Wait, wait. Now it's nearly 30 seconds. Still nothing. It's about nearly one minute to make it usable. That's on my laptop. Actually, it, my laptop is faster than. Gabriel's. Oh, you see, it loaded, but it's still not usable. You see, I still cannot, even cannot click this. Okay, it will take some more time to be usable. You Now it's just loaded, but to, I cannot click. I cannot close this. It will still take maybe twenty minutes, twenty seconds. To be totally usable. Ah, finally, it's about nearly 70 seconds on my laptop. So you can see the whole. This whole document is about. About 400 pages after merged. 400 pages. 
And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Totally nine documents merged together. And uh, when you try to export it to PDF, you can see the, but during the exporting, also you can do nothing in the LibreOffice. So if it takes more than 30 minutes, like in Gabriel's laptop, while exporting PDF, he cannot do anything on his work. He has to, he has to make a tea or coffee and wait for it to complete. On my desktop, it's less than one minute, so it, that's fine. But if it takes 15 minutes or 30 minutes to export the PDF, that would be a waste. Anyway, that is the... That is about the time, okay? So actually, the problem is that while opening, while exporting, actually, you cannot do nothing on your work. You cannot, I export and I try to do other things. No, you need to wait for him. Okay, this one is about, um, just like that mesh document, you can see there are nine documents merge together. So if after merging the document, you find that, oh, you have to fix something, maybe tiny, tiny mistakes, maybe tiny typos, you need to fix it, what can you do? You cannot edit it in the ODM file, because if you edit in the ODM file, it will just stay in the ODM file. It will not go back to the original document. The original document won't be changed. You have to go back to open the original document, fix it, and merge it again. That's if you find something wrong, find some mistakes after merging, you have to go back the, to the original document and fix the mistake and merge it again. You cannot just fix in the document and then send back to, to the original document. No, you cannot do that. So of course, you need to check everything before merge or you will waste a lot of time here. If you found mistake after merge, you will find, you use a lot of time to merge Merge again, just like that. If it takes every time, it takes several minutes to merge or to export, it will waste a lot of time. Okay, other same issue is actually the same issue about this. If you need one minute or more to save a file, you also need the same time to auto save, right? And the problem is also, when it is auto-save, you cannot do anything. Right? When it is saving, it is saving, you cannot do anything. So if you are working, you are typing, 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 and then it starts auto-save, or you will be stuck there. And if the, every time you save it, it will take several minutes, auto-saving will be a big problem. Right? right? So if you are... I'm not going to kill you. Calm down, calm down, calm down. If you are going to work on a very complicated document, you may need to disable the autosave and manually save your work frequently. Right? right? Or, or something, something happened like that, that and your, your work will be destroyed, destroyed and you have, you have no way to save, save your work. work. You need to you work, save manually, frequently, frequently, if you disable auto save. If auto save really disable you like that, so you need to take care of that. Okay. 
this is actually meant that, that this one is actually a trick. When you are handling a document with a lot of images and a lot of objects. Okay, like this one. This one is actually have the same problem of our first first problem. There are many objects hidden here. And uh, this one, Navigator, this feature is very, very good in LibreOffice. And you can go through, like I can select this, and it will jump in the Navigator. You can also from here to select, select the object. You can see when I click here, over here, did you see? This is, this is call out, this is call out, right? So if you are handling a document with a lot of small objects like this, it will be good habit to name, because if you let the navigator auto naming all the objects, you will sometimes you are difficult to know what it actually is, especially like this when, when all the when the when the core when the object is hidden because of the bug, it is hidden under this object. You will know where to find the object. So when you are handling a document with a lot of small objects like this. It will be good to name your object. You can rename it here. You can rename it here. It will be good to, to name your object here so that you can check them easier. Remember, you are handling a very complicated document. So you need to, sometimes you need to find those objects. Sometimes you need to handle that. So if you have this habit to rename all the objects here, for example, in which page, in which page and what object, right? Like this image, share the side view, something like that, in page, in which page, you will easier, you will be easier to check all the objects. Okay, that is actually a trick. Okay, this is this one is about uh, sometimes if you have object like that, you will be a not be able to click the object. Like this. You can see I cannot click on the object. I always need to, when I click, it always click the outside object, right? So I need to use tab to go through this object or from the navigator. This is a problem of writer. We say a limit of writer. When you click this object, you may you can actually create the outside object. I, we have no idea what happened there, but sometimes it will happen like this. So that's why also why it's a good habit to name your object there so that you can easily check that. You can select here to actually click that so that you can move it, right? This one is about the image compress. Image compress is actually a very good com feature. I, I, I believe that in most uh, processors there, there is such such feature like this. You can 
select compress, you select uh, this image and uh, use compress. So you can, if, if the image original size is very large, is size is very large, you can compress it to make the document smaller. Yes, you can do that, and actually it is a very good feature. But what if you have 100 image or several hundred image in this document? Do you need to compress every image one by one? Because so far, writer does not have the feature that to compress all the image at once. It does not have this feature, so you have to do the compress one by one. Well, that's one of his limits. So maybe if you really have a lot of images in this document, you need to handle it before insert it into the document. Make it smaller, make it lighter, compress in JPG. Make it smaller, the size smaller before inserting into the document. Or you will be a lot of pain if you try to compress one by one in the document. Okay? Also, you can insert vector graphics inside the document. Actually, it is very good because vector graphics, you don't need to worry about this become, become low resolution, right? But sometimes it will increase the file size a lot. That's sometimes like this. Uh, original is only 14 megabytes, but after, after insert the vector, because the vector is actually text XML. And sometimes it will increase a lot of size. And this is another problem of the vector images. Sometimes we insert the same images, we insert the same image in the document, and we can use a copy. Now we can actually use a reference, the same image in, the, in two different places, but actually in the, in the file it's only one image saved in that, and the two reference to that image. Yes, writer can do that, ODT can do that, but for vector image, you will always copy twice. If you use two different vector, you will actually create two vectors. That's also one of the reasons why it will increase a lot of file size into ODT. Okay? Okay, this should be the last one. That is to anonymize, just like all the documents I just showed you, for you so, that I, so that nobody can kill you, okay? But for the text, it is easy, but for the images, like, like what I just showed you, right? He blurred all the images, so they cannot be viewed, but actually, he has to do He has to use a shell, a for loop, to manually blur the images. He cannot do it in the writer. He can do the, anonymize the text in the writer, no problem. But for images, especially he has a lot of images, he has to do it manually, manually, and they use something like this for a for loop. To, to go to each image and make it burn and save it back to the ODT. Okay? So that is the limit it has. Okay? So that's all the tricks I show. And actually, he, because Gabriel is a very experienced writer, uh, He's a teacher, also uh, he helps the government to generate many documents, so this is his experience. I just learned from him, but also 
I think they are very good traits. When you are trying to deal with very deep, very complicated document. Okay, so uh, I don't know if you have any questions, but maybe I cannot be, maybe I cannot answer you, but you can always contact him. Okay, the slide is shared in the slide deck, so you can always contact him.